Hello everyone, Courtney here from How to Loom Your Dragon. Well, I hope everybody's been having a wonderful April. I am taking a looming break, or I said I was, though I have been actually <laughs> looming things. If you follow my Instagram and Facebook, you'll see that I actually have been making things that I'm going to be releasing in May. But essentially, it's still a break for me because... I have a little more time to uh, make the stuff. So essentially taking a month off means that I'm slowing down in general. Um, but yeah, I love looming so I don't want to stop. <laughs> but anyway, so I thought I would just post a video of um, a Q&A session for you guys because I know I get a lot of questions, um, especially on YouTube. I get a lot of questions that I really don't usually answer comments on my YouTube channel. Um, just because I get so many and I end up answering the same question like 10 times if I do that. So I figured I'd do like a QA and a um, with you guys. Um, so what I did on Facebook and Instagram was I put a post up earlier today asking for questions that you all have for me. Um, and then I would do a video, um, pick a bunch of the questions and answer them for you. So there were 18 that I chose. Um... And if this goes well and there's still a lot of questions, we can always do another Q&A. Um, but yeah, I figured I'd put something out for you guys. Since I'm not doing any looming tutorials, at least I'll have this out for you. Um, so um, before I answer these questions, I've been getting a lot of how did you start looming questions. So I'm just going to basically summarize that and then I'll get into the questions that I have here. Um, so it was, as I get comfortable, as I tell my story, <laughs> It was the day after Christmas in 2013, so December 26th um, was when I bought the first Rainbow Loom. Now before that, it was about a week before Christmas, I was babysitting for these two girls and uh, they were trying to make PG Loomis's poodle on the Rainbow Loom. So they were watching the tutorial online and trying to make it and they handed me the loom and said, Courtney, help us and I, I said, I don't know how to do this. So. I tried watching the video um, and making the poodle on the spot with them, but that just didn't work out because I had no clue what I was doing. But uh, I can be very determined, so <laughs> after I left that night, I said, I'm going to make that poodle. <laughs> it was kind of a joke, actually. Uh, my friend and I went to uh, Learning Express, and uh, I bought the rainbow loom. <laughs> it was funny, though, because... Um, the lady at the store was all like, like she didn't know I was buying it for me, so she, <laughs> she was asking questions. Oh, like, like, oh, what color case does she want, and what color this and that? And I'm thinking, should I tell this lady that it's for me? But I didn't. But they all know me at that store anyway. But um, now they know me. <laughs> but so I bought the first rainbow loom, and that was the day after Christmas that I bought it. And so the first thing I made was PG Loomis's poodle. And if you um, are following me on Instagram or Facebook, I think I posted it on Facebook too, you'll see a picture of me holding it. Um, that was kind of like a dorky picture I took right after making it. Like, hi, I made this little poodle. Who would have known it would have resulted in this, right? <laughs> Obsession. Um, but yeah, so that's how I started. And once I made the poodle, I started to change it up a little bit. So I would still be making the same design, but I would change up the ears and the tail and the colors and simple things like that and turn it into different kinds of dogs so um, I made my sister's dog with, which was a Bichon so it was like PG Loomis's poodle this big in a replica of my sister's dog and I also did my dog Pumpkin and so then I made these two tiny little tigers using the same template so I added stripes and changed the face a little bit and trial and error like I slowly changed the design and then one day when I was watching How to Train Your Dragon I said oh I should try to make toothless um, and this is actually the first toothless I made. It's kind of like gangly looking. Um, this was before the tutorial, so he's very, uh, weird looking. Like, I actually have the tying band at the tip of the mouth for this guy instead of at the tip of the tail. Um, and his wings aren't attached right. In my first tutorial of toothless, I, uh, attached the wings weird. The rest of my tutorials, I attach them the right way, or a better way. But uh, his one leg is all bent up and stuff, like his legs I attached separate from 
on the loom like I pulled it off the loom then like attached the legs so he's very he's very special <laughs> and it's, he's like all bent up but he's very special um and then from him then I perfected the design and made the other toothless which I finally put the first video on up. um now I got recognized by rainbow loom when I did the Chinese dragon this guy so this was in about September my nephew wanted me to make him a Chinese dragon, so I made this, and I guess uh, I had my How to Loom Your Dr Dragon Facebook page up at that time, so I don't know if Rainbow Loom, I don't know how Rainbow Loom saw it, but somehow they saw it, and uh, that's how they recognized me, was, and also through the Mockingjay, too, they had seen the Mockingjay that I did, so um, they loved the dragon, so now um, on their exhibitions they carry a Chinese dragon with them on their exhibitions. Yeah, um, so, yeah, so that's how that happened. Um, but yeah, I slowly started to change um, the designs up and I learned new techniques as I went. So I didn't just know exactly how to do things, like I learned by trial and error. For example, the attachment of the wings, the attachment of the stomach. Um, so slowly it got more advanced. And I use many of the same techniques in each of my creations. Yeah. All right. So um, let's start with um, some questions here. So how uh, this question is from Ashley. How long does it take to design something? Well, Ashley, it depends on what it is. Um, for example, if it's something easy, like my little baby dragons, it takes less time. Whereas if it's something big, like this gigantic poodle or Sephira or something large, it takes more time, obviously. So it really varies. Um, Sephira probably, her wings took a long time because I graphed out the entire wing with the sections divided up mathematically. Um, so she took a long time um, to design. Whereas like Little Toothless took like, once I, I made the gangly toothless that I just showed you, I kind of understood how to make a better one. So that didn't take that long at all. So it really depends on the complexity. Um, the I usually design them as I go along, believe it or not. Like my videos are divided up into sections. So I actually end up <laughs> um, designing and then filming that part, then designing the next part and filming that part. Like I usually don't design the entire thing before I film, unless it's a one part video. But if it's divided into more than one parts, then I usually design each section right before I film it, then design the next, and et cetera, et cetera. It, it varies. It really does. Um, um, let's see if I can give an example. I don't really... Like this guy, this eagle guy, which, by the way, will be released next month on May 9th. He took um, a few hours. Okay, His head took the longest because I couldn't get the head right for a while. But uh, he, he took, uh, took a few hours, um, whereas, um, like, uh, like this Banshee took, like, uh, more time, honestly. And actually, while I was filming this tutorial, the fire alarm went off, and uh, it was really annoying, because I had to refilm that entire portion of the tutorial. But literally, it was deafening the fire alarm. Fire! Fire! I was like, ah, I have to refilm this whole part, so I had to take them apart and refilm it. Oh, that was not fun. <laughs> so it's a challenge sometimes, but, um, yeah, um, so yeah, uh, I hope I kind of answered your question. I don't have an exact time frame of how long each one takes, but, uh, I design them as I go along usually, so I don't usually keep track of time. Obviously, the big ones take way more hours than the little ones. Okay, long answer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the next one's from Michelle, and that question is, what is the hardest dragon you have made? That would be Safira right here. Okay, she um, took a while to design. Her body was actually very easy because it's kind of, like, basic. Um, her wings took a long time, like I said before. Um, Smog actually took a long time, too, because his wings were just hard for me, and the technique I used for his wings I don't like as much as this technique. Um, but yeah, Safira was the hardest one. Um, and as far as the how to train your dragons, what was the hardest one of those? Um, 
probably the red death adult because he's so big. He was probably the hardest um, of the How to Train Your Dragons. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Oops. Um, somebody asked, I wasn't sure what their name was, is Looming your job? Well, essentially, yes, it is my job because I do make some income via the advertisements that play during the videos. Um, it is not my only job, though. I do have other part-time jobs that I have. This is my favorite job, though, because I love designing, so it's a lot of fun. But honestly, with all the hours I put into it, um, I'm not really making that much in the end because of how many hours I put in versus how much I make. <laughs> so I'm doing it because it's a passion more than because I make money. Um, and because it helps people. I get a lot of stories from people about how my designs help them positively, so that's one of the main reasons. It's not really the income, though the income is a motivator. Um, yeah, um, okay, so, and then Sarah asked, if you never found a passion for looming, what would you be doing instead? I'd, I don't know, actually, I'd probably be doing more painting, um, more drawing. I still do painting and drawing, but not as much as because I'm doing this. Um, um, I'd probably be working on my other jobs a little more than this, obviously. Yeah, I'm not, I don't really know. <laughs> you know, life does that sometimes. You don't really know where life takes you. So hopefully that kind of answered your question. All right, the next question is from Jay. What's the first thing you ever made besides dragons? That was, I believe the snowy owl was the first thing I ever made besides dragons. Or the first tutorial, I made. Um, but like I said before, I actually began by doing the poodle, and then I made little tigers, and then I made toothless. So essentially, I didn't start with dragons. All right, um, Lainey asks, how do you come up with designs as amazing as they are? Honestly... Um, I was given a gift. It's part talent, um, and also it does involve practice. Like I said before, trial and error, like you learn new techniques as you go along. Um, and also there is math involved, though in my designing tips video videos I actually really show you the math and what you should be doing, but essentially I don't actually do that because I can kind of figure it out in my head without doing that. But I figured that's the best way to teach you all because some people aren't as mathematically inclined. Though, um, yeah. It's mostly talent. I believe God gave me a gift and... Yeah, I don't know how else to answer that question. It's a gift and it's math practice. Three things. Whoops. Okay. Plus I'm artsy in other areas and when you're artsy in more than one area that usually helps too. Okay, um... I don't know if my phone auto-corrected this name or whether this is the actual name or whether I even pronounce this right. Jowd, forgive me if that's wrong. Um, have you ever thought of quitting looming? Yes, a lot of the time actually, just because. Not that I don't enjoy looming, but um, it's very mentally consuming sometimes um, because um, I like to make people happy, which is good sometimes, but... I can't please all 30,000 of you, so it's kind of, it can be a little mentally overwhelming, um, which is why I started just releasing my tutorials once a week, because if, in the beginning, if I didn't release one, like, every three days, I'd think, oh no, they're going to be wondering why I'm not putting up videos, I'm letting them down, like, all this crazy stuff, so, I have thought of it, and also, you know, if you check out Rainbow Loom's Facebook page now, you see all these other amazing designs that people are making, and um, it's a little intimidating sometimes, like, oh, my designs aren't as good because look at this person's designs now, like, like, they're gonna be, you know, the best, and not that I want to be the best, but, you know, I feel like I was one of the ones who started with the complex designs first, and now here's all these other ones coming out, and it's like, ah, oh, I'm not that good anymore. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, just because it gets a little overwhelming sometimes with all the requests and in the beginning I was really into it and I was missing out on other things um, so I've had to find that balance between this and the rest of my life like 
yes, I don't want to let people down and I want to make people happy, but I need to live my life too, so. But I don't think I'll be quitting anytime soon unless I get a full-time job. Um, but we'll see. You never know where life takes you, so we'll see. But yes, I have thought of quitting looming, but hopefully I won't for a while. <laughs> um, Hayden asked, where did I get the storage case from? This storage case here, I believe they're talking about. Um, Hayden, I got this off of Amazon.com. The brand is called Acro Mills. That's A-K-R-O dash M-I-L-S. So it, I got it for Christmas. It was on my Christmas list. But um, if you just go to Amazon and you search that, like search Acro Mills, whoops, um, storage compartment or something, it should come up. They have different ones, like with different sizes and so just check that out. Um, yeah, Amazon. Uh, okay. Um, Josh asked, if you had 20 seconds to evacuate your house, would you take your Rainbow Loom creations? Well, the first thing I'd take is my dog, honestly, because I love my dog. Um, so she would come first. Besides, like, family members and stuff. If they could get out on their own, then I would take my dog. Um, so essentially, I probably wouldn't take my Rainbow Loom stuff. <laughs> I might grab the poodle though, uh, if I could, like, because she's sitting right next to my bed, so if I had to evacuate from my bed, I would just grab her and my dog and go, one dog in each hand, a real dog and a big dog. <laughs> Funkin' would not be happy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I wouldn't try to grab them all, I'd just grab Diamond probably and get out of there. As well as my dog. Uh, okay. Um, Mike asked, do you feel pressured to deliver what you say you're going to loom? Yes, I do. Um, I do, definitely. If I sell, say I'm going to make something, I most definitely will make it because I don't like to let people down. But sometimes I don't end up making it when I say I will, which I need to work on. I need to just, like, say I'm going to make this sometime instead of saying exactly when, unless I have already made it. Um, but I think I feel more pressured in the dedications because some people have been on the list for almost a year and I haven't made their creation yet like so I've specifically dedicated like the hobble grunt adult to somebody and they've been waiting since like last summer for it so I think I feel more pressured to deliver the dedications like that I've said I would um, and if I tell anybody I'm doing a dedication for them I am like I have a list that I write down it's just I have a creation for each person on the list, so it all comes down to when I end up making that thing that's dedicated to them. But yes, I do feel pressure to deliver what I say I'm going to loom definitely. So that's why I have this huge list and I try to make everything on it. Huh. Okay, um, I think this was Amy, but I think my phone autocorrected to any, I don't know why. Um, Amy asked, how many packs of bands have you gone through since you started looming? Well, I've loomed about 300,000 rubber bands, which makes about 485 packs of 600. So these are the packs of 600, so I've gone through almost 500 of these. It feels like more, though. Whew. I'm surprised I haven't even loomed half a million, because honestly, I feel like I have. Alright, um... Amanda asks, have you tried Lumigurumi? Lumigurumi, for those of you who don't know, that is a new type of looming that is really in right now with Rainbow Loom. If you check out their Facebook page, you'll see Lumigurumi everywhere. Um, it's essentially cro crocheting with loom bands. Um, no, I have not tried Lumigurumi. I mean, I guess I should, because everybody else knows how to do it, but I feel like the Lumigurumi... You can make these adorable, like, stuffed animal-looking things, but I feel like you can't really get into so much detail with it. I don't know why. Maybe you can. You probably can. I don't know. But it just seems like all the creations that people are putting up look like um, stuffed animals, which honestly is not my forte. I like to try to create things more realistically, I guess. So, no, I have not tried Lumi Gurumi. Um... I need, really would have to find a lot of free time in order to try that and get that nailed down. Uh, and I don't know if I'm ever going to do Lumigurumi. 
Maybe. I don't really know. All right, Raven asks, what is the most awesome thing that happened to you since starting Looming? Hmm. Probably getting commissioned to do D.Va was the coolest thing. Diamond Sister, if you don't know who D.Va is, check that out on my channel. Um, that was pretty cool. That they wanted me to make the poodles for the fashion show for them. That was, that was fun. And also meeting the team. A couple months ago I met them, and that was fun too. Um, but I think... I think the the best thing though, even though those were fun experiences, the best thing is hearing like how positive my creations help people. Like they help people a lot. Um, like people with, you know, who can't get out so much or, I don't know, a bunch of reasons, but like it's nice to know that my creations help them with the relationships or with working with their hands or whatever it does. It's just nice to know that my creations have a positive impact on people. Harry asks, what is my favorite design? The poodle, um, probably. Because she's so big. She's like the biggest thing ever. <laughs> um, but I also like Sephira. And, uh, yeah, those are probably my favorites, the Poodle and Sephira. Um, but, uh, honestly, I, uh, when I make a new creation, often that one's my favorite till I make the next one just because it's something new. Like, so this Skull Crusher guy, it's a big Skull Crusher. I just finished designing him. He'll be out, um, on May 16th. Um, so right now he's my favorite How to Train Your Dragon because he's the newest one and he's new, you know? That's just, it's like a little kid, you know? A little kid gets a new toy and they're like, oh, this is the best thing ever until they get another new toy. Then that becomes the best thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's my favorite because he's new. Rawr. Um, okay. Um, Darley asks, how many looms do you have? I have... Ugh. 15, 15 looms and, uh, so 15 regular looms, which makes about 45 columns. I have one finger loom, one monster tail, and I have a bunch of the new extension, um, pin bar things for double looms that Rainbow Loom is going to be releasing next week. So, yeah, I probably won't be doing many more large projects, though, like this size. I do want to eventually do a fox, maybe, about the size of this, but we'll see. Okay, um, Disney Crafter, haha, asks, does, ever, does anyone ever see you in a store and run up to you and say, it's Courtney Nicole, and ask for a photo? No, that's never happened. <laughs> I'm not that famous, guys. <laughs> I only met, okay. There's this one girl that I babysit a lot, and she made some of my dragons. So she was the first fan I, I knew, because I already knew her since when she was a baby. Um, and then I actually just met somebody about a week ago um, who actually makes my thing. So I've only met, like, one person, to be honest with you, because when I was at the toy fair with Rainbow Loom, the public wasn't allowed there. It was just for toy vendors and um, people, like, buying things in bulk for whatever reason. So... I didn't meet any kids there, so I didn't really meet any followers there. So nobody, nobody has ever come up to me and said, oh my goodness, it's Courtney Nicole, take a picture. No, that's never happened. Um, that'd be cool if it did one day, but uh, I'm not expecting it to, to be honest with you. Okay, um, Sky asks, what is the most rubber bands you bought at one time? Probably about either 50 or $60 worth, which is about... 30 packs um like when I when I was making diva and I loved her so much that I wanted to make diamond too I went out and bought as many white as I could but the store only had like 20 or something packs of the white so I could only get like 20 and then at one point I went and bought a bunch of colors for 
all the How to Train Your Dragons to finish up them. Um, or I thought I was going to use them for the How to Train Your Dragons, but I ended up using them for other things. Because uh, I was afraid that um, the stores weren't going to sell Rainbow Loom for some reason. Like, I thought it was, like, dying. So I was like, I have to run out and grab all the bands I need. And <laughs> Well, yeah, I ended up using them for other things, but don't worry about that. I will finish the series, I promise. At some point. <laughs> okay, um, and Bethany asks, how many goes to get a design perfect? How many goes does it take to get a design perfect? It depends what the design is. If it's a simple design, like Toothless, he's pretty basic, black, his face is pretty straight looking. He's easy. Um, it just took this gangly Toothless that I showed you before, and then I perfected it. So that was two tries. Um... Whereas Dragon from Shrek, which I've been working on, or I tried working on a little while ago, her head just isn't coming out right, so I had to take a break from her because she was making me mad. So I literally did three tries on her head, and I was like, okay, I need to take a break from her. I'm going to get back to her, don't worry. I'm probably going to start with her wings and legs first and do those. But um, it really depends on what it is, honestly. Um, I usually get the math right when I um, plan it out. And, like I said before, I actually plan a little bit, film it, plan the next bit, film it, etc. So, usually it doesn't take more than one or two runs, but with this dragon from Shrek, I've been taking, like, three plus runs. So, I even filmed, and it turned out awful, so I have to redo it. <laughs> and you're not getting a sneak peek, because I took the head apart. Um, yeah, okay, uh, that was all the questions I selected for today. Um, so I may eventually do another Q&A. Um, if you ask me questions below this video in the comments, I'm probably not going to answer them just because I don't really answer YouTube comments anymore that much. So you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook, see the links in the description for that. Okay, um, and I guess that's it everybody. I hope you enjoyed this Q&A session. I hope I answered the questions well. Um, and yeah, well, happy looming. Um, I will see you in May. Um, and you saw the baby Safira. If you didn't, you can check out that video of the April update. She'll be released on May 2nd. Then this bald eagle guy will be on May 9th. Okay. Then, uh, this guy, Skull Crusher, Big Skull Crusher, will be May 16th. And then, uh, just follow me on Instagram and Facebook to see what's coming out the rest of the month. Or you can just check out the May update, which I will be uploading at the end of the month. Okay, everybody? Thanks for your time, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your month. And happy looming. Have fun catching up on all my projects that you haven't made yet. Bye!